and welcome to the Pepper Bird Magazine. Did you know that the Pepper Bird Magazine has been in existence for over 25 years and we're still going strong? I invite you to take an ad on our internet magazine, which is very, very useful during COVID days. So please give us a call. We'll come and have a quick chat with you and video you and your business. Look at the number below. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women. Welcome to Attorney Commander J.R. Kupukwai Chesson Talk Show. This morning, I want to say hi to my people from Dominica, DR. I'm wearing a shirt today, my peoples. So much love, much peace. My blessing. Okay, that's my first Hispanic home in the Caribbean. And overall, it's my third Hispanic nation in the Caribbean, next to the Bahamas and next to Jamaica. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. <clears throat> and uh, it's good to be here. Uh, last night or yesterday, this morning, early this morning, I listened to Henry Costa's tip of yesterday's explaining why he got himself involved 
with Mo Ali because Mo Ali is his friend, so he just didn't know what happened. But I know what happened. He had a little too much to drink. And when the Mo Ali issue came up, he just jumped in there with this one-sided feeling for his friend. But this is why we have to be mindful as advocates. We have to be very careful as we handle issues in our country, how we handle them, especially. Now, after explaining it, Casa apologized. Casa is a good Liberian. He efforts for our country and our people are genuine. And I think he has a good head on his shoulders. But the problem in Liberia today is that we need older, more mature leaders. And that's why when I saw this interview with Joseph Numa Walker, Vice President, former Vice President of Ellen Johnson Sallif regime, and standard bearer of the Unity Party now, a prospective candidate for the 2023 presidential election. It was important because most of the time we say we don't hear from Joe Barker. He's so quiet. He's in the corner. We worry about his health. The same time, the same issues Costa brought up in his show. So I listened to the show on Lofa, Lofa Julius show this morning. And all of them are just happy that Boca is becoming president. Even the caster. Aqua had done a better interview with Joe Boca because there are some concerns in our country. And Costa was so elated with the idea of Boca becoming president of Liberia. So was Julia Lofa. He said, oh, my uncle, my uncle, and all of that. But I am a lawyer. A Liberian lawyer. I am a political scientist. I'm a realist. Pragmatist. Some of the questions I would have asked both guy would have been different. He wouldn't have been probably so comfortable with, with, with those people. So I gotta address his interview with Costa and express my views and my concerns about the things that cast that in touch on. Uh, first, Walker was Ellen's vice president. That's the first thing. We talk uh, and cast the ass in, but it, uh, the, the culture or impunity and all these things. And I felt that Joseph Boca got by. He skated by. He skated by and Casa didn't come back with follow up questions on the issue of corruption, the issue of negligence, the issue of neglect. So we have to understand who we want to lead us. And I read it, I will reiterate the point that I really think Liberia needs a mature leader. But we need a different kind of leadership. We don't want to go back in the see tribalism. We don't want to go back in the see negativity. We don't want to go back in the same, the same, same problems we've had all our lives. Corruption comes in many forms. It's not only cash. 
it, it destroys our country in different different ways. And we have to understand these ways that make our leaders and our people corrupt and take our society from one state of corruption to another state of corruption. We, we've been through too many states of corruption. We came through seven those state of corruption to the PPP and, and the Mojas and all of them that were the interim government. We came through the, all the useless people and our country got nowhere with all the interim governments. Then we finally decided to go to a war. We went to the war and do nothing. We come out of the war again. What happened? Same things. Same things. Back going forward. Back going forward. Poor Ellen there. She was no use. Look at our country after Ellen Johnson Sally. It got worse. It got worse. Justice is oblivious in our country. Why? Because our leaders have no sense of justice or the need for justice. They enjoy themselves in a corrupt system. And I listened to Joe Barker, he didn't offer me too much hope either. So let's play his this interview. Let me address it. I didn't cop it all because everything wasn't necessary because he was talking about Joe Barker Foundation, all of that. I didn't get into all of that. I wanted to part that there with the Liberian people. So let me hear some of this thing and let me discuss it so we can know what's happening. Okay. But even the fact that you take the resources and use it without the set rule is impunity. It means that you don't care what the people feel and you are doing. I'm going to start this over. Uh, Mr. Former Vice President. Most Liberians want an end to the culture of impunity in our country. They want justice served against, for example, the current uh, administration, which I believe will be the past administration in a few years. And for what they're doing to our country, destroying our country. What do you promise you will do if and when you are elected president of Liberia to end the culture of impunity in our country. What would you do, sir? Henry, when we talk about impunity, we're not just talking about the disregard for the rule of law, the disregard for people feeling, but even the fact that, that you take the resources of a country and use it without a set rule is impunity. It means that you don't care what the people feel and you will do what you want to do. So for me, impunity in government, impunity, whichever case means that it's a disregard for people, their feelings, and that is not something we can compromise. If you want to make sure that you have a country that will provide for its citizens, a country that will respect the rule of law, a country that will respect people, impunity has to be dealt with decisively. So would you expect punitive action under the law, under a group work as presidential? And the Liberian people themselves will support that. And I believe this is what we will do. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is my first problem. <clears throat> this is my first problem. Joseph Boca is talking about impunity <clears throat> and, the, and the cultural impunity that exists in Liberia. He has been a part of that culture from Tutman time. Joe has been a part of that culture. He has served in every government position from Tottenham to Ellen. So 
What cultural impunity are you talking about? What cultural impunity? Honor Ellie Johnson Sally, we had the worst nepotistic regime in Liberia history. A woman with her sons and her sister and her brother-in-law running our country like that, their private company. And Boka was the vice president of that regime. So there was no rampant corruption under that regime. He didn't notice anything was wrong with Ellen Johnson Sally running that country, with our oil company money getting missing, with the billions of dollars of the, the billions of dollars that were pumped into that country prior to and during Ebola that we can't account for. Boca were in all of that. And now he tells us that there's a cultural impunity. But the way he's talking, he's not talking about Ellen government, he's talking about George Weir government. And George Weir government is taking the blame for Ellen government. But he's so idiotic, he's so dumb, he will sit down there and take the blame for her. Because everybody looking to Joe Borka now as a leader. And these were the questions I was going to ask him that Costa didn't ask him. Costa was telling us, oh, we can expect a revolution now, a change. In How, why didn't that thing happen on a Borka in the beginning? Why it didn't happen under him in the beginning? He'd been in our government for almost 60 years. And the same thing been happening time again. Now you think Boca will just wake up and learn new tricks? You see, I, I spoke with Boca when he came to Rhode Island. That was during the end of the early Johnson Sally regime. When he came before the election and all of that. And I gave him my number to call me and he called me. He called me. And that's when I realized I know all these people, but I don't know them. I know all of them. They know me by name. I never met some of them. I never met Boca personally. I never met Ellen personally in the 2006. I haven't met most of the people around Ellen. Most of the people in government, I hear the name, I, I haven't had interactions with them. So I don't really know these people. So when Joe Borka called me, we didn't have much to say. Because then that, that, that I realized, I said, oh, I told Joe to call me. He's not president yet. He's running his campaign. He doesn't really know what I can do. They have heard about me. I know Boca from my family and all of that. That's why I behave like I know him personally because of all this link with my family and, and with the government of Liberia. So we have this innate relationship that never even existed. So when he called me, I was like, well, I would say to Boca. So we just talked briefly, and I told him who I was and all of that. And I hung up. That's when it's dawned on me. That even when I went to meet Ellen, she didn't know me. I didn't know her. We have heard about each other. She knew me through family ties. And that's how most of the things work in Liberia. You and the people may have no ties, but you know them. But this was the question I was going to ask Boca. Why? That just now you're going to change things? That just now you're waking up to the reality that you can lead Liberia? You know, because I'm confused, I'm, I'm, I'm totally baffled and worried about my country. I'm totally worried 
So let's go back and finish here and what uh, he had to say. Elected in 2024, inaugurated in 2024, uh, that is, of course, once you won the nomination of the CPP, you would be inheriting a badly broken economy, a country whose image abroad is in tatters, uh, low investor confidence, perhaps at the all time low. How would you work to salvage this myriad of problems that you would be inheriting were you elected by the Liberian people to lead them? Henry, you have to understand that people know who comes to power. They know what the person stands for. They know what you believe in. They listen to what you say. They listen to uh, what they say about you, your conduct. And, and I definitely believe that a good will is out there. But people are looking for a leadership that will provide leadership by example. A leader that has a tradition for being honest and accountable. And I definitely believe that that is loan we open doors to investment open doors to uh, people of goodwill who want to assist and i definitely believe that is possible thank you very much sir in 2020 in 2017 during the presidential hold your peace costa hold your peace now joe didn't answer this question he didn't answer it because the question was, how are you going to handle the mirage of problems confronting our country? How are you going to handle it? And Joe didn't answer this question. He didn't answer it to my satisfaction. Why? Because he's talking about what a leader should do what a leader should be able to do. What would Joe Borka do? What would Joe Borka, how will he bring investors in the country? How will he provide the avenues for these things to happen? You see? Because I want to know. When I'm interviewing a president, that president better be able to tell me how they're going to change the lives of me and my people. How are they going to make things happen? for our total benefit. How are we gonna move our country from one era to the next? And these are the things I wanna know. And Joe Boca didn't answer this question. You see, how are you gonna the trust in the investors to come? Yeah, we know a leader should be able to do that. A leader should be able to turn ice and water. A leader should be able to lay a ball egg on the cement and it turn to egg and it fries. A leader should be able to do anything, perform a miracle, turn water into wine. Yeah, a leader can do all of that. But how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? That's a vague answer. And that's why this interview was so short. So Borka need to come and let me interview him. Let him tell me how you gonna do these things. I don't want no talking and, and just and babbling and passing things all to these young children. They say, oh yeah, we like that. We get no, no, no. You gotta tell me some specifics. We gotta go into more detail of how you're gonna do these things, Borka. You've been there since Hector was a pub. You've been a leader in the Liberian government since Hector was a pup, you're supposed to have a specific plan laid up by now. If you're coming to change our country, the trajectory of our lives and our direction, and you come and you come talk this kind of thing here, that a leader should be able to bring investors and all of that. 
We want no shoot be thing here, man. You gotta get this thing together. And Casa, come on, man. You know? I know we got we got a, lay, a lot of lay young dummies in our community that we just start clapping and, and, and doing everything because they're not understanding what leadership means. They don't understand what the crux of governance is all about. And we want leaders. We want a new, renewed type of leaders who will give us specifics. I will do this. I will do that. I will do that. Not saying, oh, a leader should know how to do this. And so I will just, we'll just work together to bring investors. How are you going to bring investors? What are you going to do in the country to motivate investors to come? He didn't even tell us that. So this is another interview that we're writing on the edge shell about. Let's continue. The debate held at the TV City Hall. I was there, I watched it. You poignantly and emphatically said when you were asked, what would be, if elected, your number one agenda item? You said, very, no. very roads. Road number one, road number two, road number three, and road number four. Yeah. And I'm asking you, sir. This is a bad development scheme. Roads are essential for our country. But roads can't be everything that we need in our country. We have to have a systematic developmental program for Liberia and Liberian people. Our leader cannot come and just say everything is wrong. Well, well, that shows that Joe Boca and his unity party have not taught the campaign over. They do not understand the specific of what needed to raise our country to the next level. There is no way in Liberia with all the problems, as Castor said, the mirage of problems in our country. With Joe Biden just, oh, I miss her. Oh, gosh. You see, my two countries in my head all the time. There is no way that Joe Borka with major plan would be roads, 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 roads. Then he said the roads would bring development. So you mean the road would build the schools? It would augment the school buildings, our drastically deplorable school buildings? The nasty facilities our children is, are in, you would not attend to that. You would just focus on road, 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 road. Your football, that's insanity. That's insanity. There is no way with all the problems we got, roads will be our only major priority. No. Then we're going back to the old type of development. If Borka only plan is roads, 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 Liberia will fail. We'll fail the problem. And that demonstrates that Borka has not been doing nothing. He is unity party. They have not contributed anything to our society. How in the hell the development of our country will only rest on roads? We got a serious mental health problem. We got a serious health problem. We got a serious education problem. Those are the three problems we have. Not even that, those are not even the three problems we have. First of all, we gotta bring stop this corruption. We can't get into our government and all our money stolen again. So we're not even talking about that, bringing our money back. That should be a priority to stop the stealing. And all of these things gotta be done simultaneously. Yes, we want roads, but we gotta get our money back. We do roads, health and education. All three in one, simultaneously. Getting our money back, that is the second thing. That is the only separate thing. But roads, education and health are our three priorities. 
and we if we don't if we don't attack these things at the same time. And we're talking about we want to do roles, 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 fights. When it when time we come back to education and healthcare, why they would they would just develop by themselves? They can't. And this is where Boca is not even thinking for the future. And don't get me wrong, my people. I don't hate poker. I don't hate poker. Liberia needs a fatherly figure now. But that fatherly figure got to understand that our country is down and dead. We have to have a team that will evaluate our system, evaluate our country, and work together to build our country fast. Government alone can't do this thing. So government cannot sit down and just say rules, 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 rules. No. We need partners. We need our people in the diaspora more than ever before. Because diaspora Liberians can contribute significantly to rebuilding our country. Significantly. And the government can concentrate on other things. But you can't leave health, education, and roads and say you just deal with roads, roads, roads. Our children got to go to school, whether you're building roads or not. They got to go to school every day. And they cannot be in deplorable buildings. They can't be in unsanitary buildings. They cannot be in unequipped buildings. We all educational supplies and books and the necessities. So I just want to let's hot and let's give Joe Boca a real interview. Let Joe Boca tell us what he's gonna do with us in 20, 2003. Okay? We gotta know. And he gotta have specific plan. DJ can't come on the TV and talk something that they expect a man like Rodney Chesson to accept that kind of thing. No, that Costa then kind of thing. That's satisfactory for Costa and the boys, not Rodney Chesson. So let's go on with the program. Yeah, where well, my man going? Walk up with this thing, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. Would that still be a top priority on the uh, uh, Joe Parker presidential agenda? Henry, I can tell you the problem of this country with respect to prices, with respect to health, with respect to education, are largely tied to roads. There are no roads. You don't see opportunities where they should be when you don't have work. From up to 173 years, we only have one road. How do you know what is happening in uh, Bapolu when you don't have road, you don't go there? The prices of goods, commodities is on the market. <laughs> okay, for 173 years, we haven't had roads, only one road that's going up from Monrovia to Kakatai or to that side. There's no road going to the southern region. He said, if you don't have road, how you be able to get information from Bapulu? How have we gotten it for 100 years? It's not a new problem. This problem been going on for 173 years and we have existed as a country. We have existed as a nation. So how has all these things happened? And in one a year, we never bothered to change it. Now all of a sudden, it's a major problem. I mean, I just can't, and Joe being president, Joe being government, for, for, for most of that 173 years. <laughs> I think he's been there for 73. Okay, let's leave the century up. He's been there for 73 years. If no road there, who you blame? Let's go back. Uh, 
market uh, high because to get them to where they are needed. So there's no way you can, when I talk about road, I'm not talking about voting road on the Taiwan Human Road here, uh, 50,000 dollar road and make it three, three million dollars. We're talking about roads that will open up the country. We're talking about a road that will open up opportunity, roads that will get businesses going and dependency reduced because people believe their goods and commodities can get to the market. That's what we're talking about. Economic value, that uh, 50,000 hour road I inflicted. Thank you, sir. That's a good one. Now, so we've witnessed over the last few months a number of mysterious killings and deaths in the country. This tearing trend has gripped the nation with fear. What's your view on, 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 on this particular problem? Henry, that's another uh, impunity because when people commit crimes, when they are not able to track them down. They believe they can get away with it. One of the things that I have problem here with is unresolved crime. And people believe that, you know, in about a week. <laughs> Hold on. Unresolved, unresolved crimes. <laughs> oh, Lord. What happened to Harold Greaves? We never got any resolution on Harold Greaves crime. How many other people in that Ellen Johnson said regime were killed and we got no resolution on their crimes? Tell now. Our money got stolen from Locale. She said she was going to be responsible. We got no report on that money now. What happened to that money? So these things are nothing new, book are telling us. These are the same crimes of cultural impunity. And he just said it again where people just do things and get away with it, commit murders, and nobody can find the people who do it. And it's just a Roma, Roma, and we get away. And all these people are antagonists of the government. So how are they just disappearing? And we can't find it on Ellen, nor can we find it on a Joe Weir. And Ellen Vice President saying, hey, I ain't even going to that. Let listen to him. As long as we continue not to pursue criminals, we continue to compromise on investigation. We continue to allow people who commit crime to get away. Crime will increase. Nobody will be safe. Impunity will continue. And I believe we have not dealt with it decisively. A lot of criminals commit crimes and get away with it because nobody cares that we cannot condemn. We know we have the mechanism to deal with it because one of the things that you provide for economic development, what you provide for investors is to make sure that they live in a safe, atmosphere, even the citizens. And that is something that I've had problem with, the fact that, that people commit crimes and we are never able to bring them to board. We have to deal with it. Thank you, sir. Dealing with a problem by nipping it in the bud, by ending the cause of opportunity. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, some of your supporters, people who frantically and genuinely support you and believe in you. Uh, I got a problem with all of these. Because Casa isn't really pushing the dialogue of corruption in Liberia, of the cultural impunity that Joe have lived in all the time. He talked about Rawlings, calling Joe Mr. Clean. Rawlings is now our leader. Rawlings doesn't know what happened in Liberia. He's looking at it from a corruption standpoint. 
Yes, Joe has no record of corruption, but he has a corruption, he has a record of neglect, of neglecting the people of Liberia, neglecting his job to care for the Liberian people. Just because you don't steal, that don't mean you can't be derelict of your duties. And Joe been derelict for all the years. I just gotta say it like where I say, I got nothing against Joe. But when we look at the overall apple, if we talk about fairness and honesty and trustworthiness and truthfulness and all of that, Joe dropped the ball many times. He dropped the ball. You know, so if you get there to enjoy the kick and enjoy the ride, and you don't care about the consequences of where the ride is taking you, then you gotta take the blame for the ride too. And Joe been taking the ride for long. He been taking the ride for long, so he need to give us more explanation. He need to come sit here with Tony Commander Chesson. Let me drill him so he can give us some real answers to the development plan he's got, developmental plans he got for our country. Instead of sitting with Costa, who already want him to win, because all of them got their hands in the pot. Lobo, all of these young boys got their hands in the pot. You know? But I'm concerned about my nation and my people. I'm concerned about what Joe, what Joe Boca is going to do that's going to be different than we are and Ellen Johnson Selleff to lift my country up to another level that is far better than it is now. So let's finish this thing because he's talking about his health now. This is one of the concerns that were me myself. Let's check it out. As well as non supporters, uh, accuse you of being too quiet and politically inactive. They're concerned. Some of them for genuine, honest, legitimate reasons. Some of, some of them, of course. What say you to that? Harry, I know the Liberian society is a talking society. We always on the radio. And part of it also. What well, the Bible says, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. People, I'm sure some of the people where they were gainfully employed, they were going to do this. They would reduce the number of times on the internet, on the radio. But let me tell you, Henry, when we gave our confession speech, we promised to work with the government. We promise to support the government. And unlike the other people, I said that, and I said it with all my, my heart that we are going to support the government. Knowing very well that we live in this society, we part of the society. I wasn't going to wait after one year to begin to jump down on the government. We had to give them time. Unlike the other people, we do that. We wanted to make sure that they know that we were there, that we were listening, and we were watching. And a lot of people wanted us to talk, but we couldn't talk at the time. And besides that, Hello and welcome to the Pepperberg Magazine. Did you know that the Pepperberg Magazine has been in existence for over 25 years and we're still going strong? I invite you to take an ad on our internet magazine, which is very, very useful during COVID days. So please give us a call. We'll come and have a quick chat with you and video you in your business. Look at the number below. I 
I'm not the type to always be on the radio. When you see and who coming from and who is calling me, and I am a person, I observe, I take time because when I talk, people listen. So I don't just go around talking because people want me to talk. I talk on critical issues and I choose the time to talk. Other people may want to talk because, you know, there are some people who talk because they want to be heard. But I talk because I want people to listen and learn from what I say and let it bring some benefit to the society. So we are different. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you know, that's, that's also, you know, another issue of some people maybe genuinely and some people insincerely concerned about your health and how fit you would be when an is elected president. Uh, you look great. I, 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 tell, I tell them all the time, every time I see you or every time I interact with you, but, but, and I'm seeing the comments there, we got over five, almost 5,000 people watching on Facebook alone, and, and they seem to agree now. So what can you say to them? How, how can you allay those concerns? Very grateful to those people who are concerned about my health. Uh, thank you to them. But Henry, I'm very healthy, and I know it. And if I were not healthy, with all honesty, I would not tell the Tigerian that I would vote for a position when I know I cannot serve. The concern about health is not that they know that I'm not healthy, but they want to see me not being healthy. But I'm just telling them they are disappointed because I'm healthy, I move around, and I'm energetic. I have nothing to complain about. So I tell them, let them transfer their illness and whatever to where they want to be. As far as Joseph Walter is concerned, I'm healthy and I'm bouncing. Now, this is one thing a lot of that I've been were concerned about Joseph Boca's health. <clears throat> and although we can see that he's in relatively good health, he still got two more years until the election where he sustain his health, with his health deteriorate in one year. Anything could happen, Joe is in his senior tenority. Anything can happen to him. And as much as we, so people may want him to be president, the cast of them, we have to be mindful of all of that. Not because we don't we want Borka to be sick, but we want to make sure that our leader would not disappoint us during the first year of leadership. When everything started going good now, the leader just dropped with some kind of debilitating sickness or some kind of age old disease or sickness. So these are things we think about now. You all want to be like the Americans? We think like Americans now. So everybody want to know whether the president will be healthy, whether the president will be sick soon, whether the president is involved, many things. So these are all the factors we got to think about. And our our president got to demonstrate that he's active, not only by sitting home. He got to get up and do occasions, do, do visits, do things, you know. People don't expect him to be overly active. But you running for president. That trip to Sierra Leone was good. You got to come out more. Then the people know you're doing things. The president is, the presidency is not a position to sit down. It's not a position where you say, oh, I'm president. I'm not going to do certain things. I'm not going to take care of these things and, and, and that my country needs taken care of. You got to get up and do it. And that's why your health is important. We see you moving around. We see you driving around. We see you having talks conventions, meetings with people of your staff and other things. It doesn't have to be 
public affairs, it could be party affairs, party organizing, party directing, party guidance, party, anything party. But at least let us see you move around. Let us see you engage in the public. Because the presidency is a job that is engaging. You're not going to be sitting down one place. You're going to be moving around. And if you're going to wait to be president to move around, that would be too late. You got to demonstrate those things why you are not president. So basically, these were my takes on Joe Boca. The rest of the things now from year four to his personal life. But we're looking at his health. We're looking at his ideals. What are his ideals for leading our nation into a new era? We can't go with rules, 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 rules. No. We got overwhelming problems in our country that we must address simultaneously if our country must grow and develop. We can't concentrate on rules, 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 rules before we come to health, 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 health. Then we we'll go to education, education. No, that now our country develop. We must have a strategic plan of comprehensive development. So that's all I got to say to you this morning. I went through Joe Borkai interview with Costa. I felt it was one-sided. I felt it was not balanced enough where Joe asked the question that we need to know that he would be a good leader for our people and our country. So with all these things in mind, with all these things we have to contend with, we need to hear from our president, our elected, a proposed president, acknowledged president, and we got everybody thinking about Joe, Joe, Joe. So where is the CPP now? Hey, Elliot, is Elliot Cummings swept under the rug? What happened to Elliot Cummings? So these are things we're waiting to hear about. And I'm concerned about my country because we don't take time of our efforts and our struggle, everything will fail. Our country will fail totally again. So we must understand, we must understand the need, the urgent need for us to have leaders who address the specific needs of our people in our country and give up specific terms of how we're going to develop or the programs you're going to put in place of your ideals of developmental programs that are realistic and not just utopian or the utopia dreams. So let's get our act together, my people. This is why Tony Commander J.R. Kukwachess is here to guide you, to guide you, to guide you. Aluta! Continue. Have a good day, my people. Have a good day. I'm seizing from the wicked. Yeah.